Hi guys, it's time for an update on our uh, sawmill project and uh, nice day out. Uh, we escaped the really warm weather. I'll try to get some stuff in here before too many lawnmowers start up. Um, so this is where we're at right now on the mill. Doesn't really look like a whole lot of progress going on here. Um, I did get the blade guides uh, kind of dummied up here for the drive side. We'll break one of those down. This is just kind of set in there right now with some clamps to try to figure out what I'm going to do as far as attaching it and leaving some adjustment in it. I've got the lift system put back up in place here. Here's the rest of that handle put together. It locks, there's a pin that locks into these holes so when you push the handle in you can turn it. Uh, this all moves real easy so put it up against the stops but uh, so I don't have uh, don't have the spring located yet. I need some kind of a pin here to uh, hold that spring in place but there's a set screw right here that can be locked and that, that's what goes into the hole to lock things. Um, you can see that the, there's a collar right here that this flat bar is welded on to and a hole through it to pivot on. And that's what allows the mechanism to work and then it's held on to the jack uh, shaft with a roll pin. Here's what I've got for uh, our guide system. These are blade guides that I got from Cooksaw. <clears throat> it's got these spacers that go in here so that it can rotate on the bearings. These are hardened rollers. You will see some of these out there being advertised and they're made out of 1018 steel which is cold roll low carbon steel and although they might look like a roller they're not going to last for very long these are hardened uh, you try to rub a file up against them and it just skates over it without uh, taking off any metal even these can be damaged uh, if they should stop for a moment with the saw blade it can cause a flat spot on them so you can imagine what the other ones would be like um, so I went with these because uh, even though I can machine the metal I would have to get special metal for it and then I'd have to send it out to be hardened and it was way cheaper just to get these already made they already had the bearings installed with the snap rings that came with these spacers so it was just the way to go Okay, next I milled out this block. Um, it could have just been fabricated from some pieces of steel. I could have used a tube for the outside and put a metal plate on the end of it. I've seen them made with uh, plates for all four sides and then the plate welded on the end of it. But essentially it's just a pocketed um, assembly for an adjuster to go into. Then I have this piece of inch and a quarter bar. And again, all this stuff's just things that have been pulling out of the scrap pile, so it's uh, all odds and ends. Um, I drilled this and threaded it for a half inch screw. Okay, so we'll show how this thing's put together. Um, I'm using a cap screw in here. And then for adjusting the rollers in and out, um, I've just put shims on here. Uh, what I plan on doing is removing one of them after the saw is all built to get the distance of the roller away from the blade. But um, you'll be able to adjust the length of this thing in a couple of different ways. 
but this is the easy way. Put the spacer on for the roller. Now the bar with the threaded end goes into the block. That's a tight fit. I've seen, seen some of these outfitted with uh, set screws on here. And I'm guessing that is for uh, larger tolerances when they made the parts. I made mine kind of close. Okay, these holes in the block are half inch, so they don't have any threads in them. And the bar is threaded, so you can see this gap down in here. So when you tighten this screw, you can see that it pulls that uh, bar upward or pushes the head of this downward. And uh, I have a nut on this side. Which Will probably also be a locking variety. We can see the the gaps now over on this side. So by adjusting this screw right here, I can center my uh, gap on each side. And then by locking this uh, screw, it'll hold that setting. And then I have this piece of tube here. I didn't have anything the right size, so it's actually a sectioned tube. Um, it's welded through the middle here in four pieces so I could get the interior I wanted, but I'm sure other sizes could be used. Capped it with some quarter inch plate on the end. And this bar just goes inside. Okay, I don't know if this is a necessary feature or not, but I did um, cut the end of this five degrees so that it can rock around inside of here without binding. Something I could have done, I guess, with a sander or something, but I just put it in the lathe and gave it a quick turn on in the four jaw chuck. So. Put this screw here. Um, this allows this part to move in all directions inside of the tube. So I have a pretty decent amount of adjustment for any angles that I might need to compensate for. Generally when you're welding steel together you can probably get to around a sixteenth of an inch or maybe a little tighter in a tolerance but uh, and having the adjustments afterwards is always good okay so that's the completed guide assembly. The screw here can be tightened down after uh, any adjustments are made. Um, could stack shims back in behind here if you needed to lengthen the assembly or shorten it. Along with these shims that I put up inside of here that can also be used to lengthen or shorten it. Here's the other guide assembly that I just have clamped onto the saw right now. Um, I have to come up with some kind of a way to attach it to the saw head. This one's going to be fixed so I don't have to be able to move it around. And I've just got some parts dummied in here right now. But I have to be sure I don't obscure this uh, adjustment screw in any way. And uh, there's also one on the other side so the whole thing's going to be moved this direction out here to uh, allow access to that screw and make sure that it doesn't get obscured by anything but uh, basically this is the identical same guide as the other side. I can see 
now that it may have been an advantage to have the adjusters on the back but this is so simple to do this compared to the other style of guides that that's just the way I decided to go. For the opposite side of the saw I needed an adjustable uh, guide one that can be moved in and out to keep the amount of blade in the cut as short as possible so I'm going to use a this is just a short cutoff piece here but I'm going to use this material which is inch and a quarter square and I have these bearings that have a v-groove in them put two on top and one adjustable one under the bottom and that allow this uh, rail to slide in and out but I didn't really like this uh, diamond profile so I am going to mill it down to a different profile so I'm cutting the top of it off flat and I think I may do the other side too just to make it a total of three quarter inches thick and then this will be with the edge that the bearings ride on Well, that ended up being a little bit more than uh, what I thought, but I ended up cutting off both sides because as I removed material from one side of it, the thing took on a definite curve shape, um, unfortunately. That's one of the problems with uh, rolled metal is that it has stress built into it. And as you start removing parts of it, it will pull one direction or another have to compensate for that kind of thing so milled off the other side and it's back straight again and uh, I guess if anything it's a little bit lighter well another day of fabrication and uh, looks like we're gonna have to get this uh, posted up here pretty quick um, did get the uh, idle pulley assembly figured out This part will get put up into here and bolted through this tab down at the bottom so that it can pivot on a screw and that raises and lowers the pulley so that pulley will go up and down like that Anyway, we'll get that figured out, and uh, next week we should have that installed, and we'll get the guides put on, and get this thing closer to being finished up. So, thanks again for watching.